So early in April, myself and the team set out on a mission to visit eight countries in Europe, doing six camps for international hoopers in 22 days. Our ultimate mission is to grow the game of basketball across the world, to give every hooper the experiences they wish for and the resources to help them not only take their career to the next level, but their life as a whole. We just want basketball to be the biggest sport in the world and for millions of hoopers worldwide to reap the benefits of that. And from the outside, this trip was amazing. And it was. It was a life-changing experience I wouldn't trade for anything. But I'll tell you this for sure. It was a grind. Being in brand new places, traveling every two to three days, working our asses off to give everyone the best experience possible, losing luggage, missing trains, delayed flights, all that. And I'll give you a full look into it all. So check out our journey on this first part of Grow the Game European Tour. Oh yeah, there you go, Paris. I took that. 740. Bro, S. It doesn't say anything. Right now it is 640. You can see over there, but it's what 140 back home, and we left it for something p.m. So safe to say, time zones are completely messed up, but it is what it is. We will uh, we'll get to Paris at like 11 a.m. and then I guess not sleep. So. Definitely using this to get through it, but overall, can't complain. So we are en route now to Paris. So this is just a quick stop, and then we'll be in Paris for two days. Um, so we'll be doing a clinic tomorrow night, so Thursday night. Um, that'll be kind of a smaller one. That was last minute, but just wanted to put something together for people there. Um, meet a bunch of people out there, and then from there, Friday, we'll go to Oslo, uh, do a two-day clinic there. Saturday, Sunday, and then we're off to London, and that's kind of the first leg of our trip. So it's crazy kind of being out here, like definitely my first time uh, in Europe, but even really outside the country significantly, so. This is the second workout of the day. <laughs> this is my guy, Constantinos, uh, came through to pick us up, helped us set up the, uh, the clinic. So he's kind of showing us around Paris, um, helping us navigate this crazy city. So here we are. Like I mentioned, I'd never been to Europe before. So this is like a movie at this point. Paris, that's like the stuff we've been seeing on movies for years. But hey, we're here now. And it's time to check it out a little bit before the clinic tomorrow. And one thing about Europe we noticed early is the transportation. Maybe a little bit less easy when we're carrying a bunch of suitcases, but this truly changes the way of life because you can get places so easily even without a car. Just a cool little observation early on. And even in the midst of seeing everything and being tourists, there's always one order of business that helps us get acquainted to a place. You already know what that is. There's always something about hooping in other places. Even just small differences that you'll see, whether it's playing style, how they communicate, you see it even across cities in the states, and obviously that difference becomes larger once you get overseas. So straight off the plane, this is the best thing we could have possibly done. Like when you land somewhere, you, you see everything is like, especially in a place like this, it's so iconic. It's like almost like a movie, and you just see everyone as like characters almost. Which sounds weird, but. It's, it's true, and then once you start to hoop with people and interact with them, see see where they're coming from, then it's a lot uh, it's a lot more personable. You know, I think that should be something that we do every time. Like we pull up to parks, whoever's hooping, we're just like, yo, come through for free. Like, yeah, we're not even trying to make money off of them. Just literally come through, 
hoop, enjoy it, like grow the game. But it was dope to see that they actually knew about the clinic. Mind you, we still hadn't slept since we left Miami. So it was about time. He's lost the battle and the war. And now the next morning, it's time to get to business. This day is officially the start of a three week journey where we're in the gym pretty much every day, adjusting, adapting to new places, and trying to build a culture globally. Number one, Americans in general, yeah, and then like in, the, gonna, in basketball. You're not too. gonna like. Oh no, I, I'm willing to hear it. You want, you want there's to probably a reason. About basketball or start with everything, okay, and then and then go to okay. basketball. <laughs> so in France, we consider you the dumbest people of the planet. It's fair. Because we have so many <laughs> videos fair. of like. Americans in the streets, not knowing yeah. where Europe is or what Europe is, a continent or a country. They're just so self-absorbed. Like people shooting at a tornado to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. So, so do you feel like the lack of just resources is kind of what's holding it back? Or? We have a lot of good players. A lot yeah. of oh, absolutely. Good kids. Yeah. But since uh, you don't have the structures yeah. to push them, yes. uh, it's really difficult. So again, our job is to help elevate that. Whenever I want to go, I can do the same thing and get downhill, all right? So we'll go here, I'm slow, I'm just protecting it, and then I can turn either way and get downhill. Away. That's good? All right, let's go. Last one like this, then we'll get some water. You're coming up and getting the ball from me. You're coming up and giving me a high five. I'm like, that. all right, and then it's live. So even though as Americans we're the dumbest people in the world, just kidding. That little two hour clinic was a great warm up for the trip. So this is a good way to just get used to the language barrier, the culture, everything that goes into it. And just seeing the hoop culture in Paris and how it's growing is really cool to see. I personally think it's gonna be one of the hot spot cities in the world soon. And I was glad to be a part of that for a little bit. Gotta go pick up these shirts. Uh, that we're bringing to Norway. We had a, a delay in the production of the other one. So, gotta pick these up. 30 minute train ride with all this, but it's part of the journey. So, let's get it. My boy chose the backward walk. It's gonna be efficient. We're turning this way. 30 minutes. <laughs> in like 40 degrees. 40 degrees. Endless light. I swear, and if I slip, <laughs> put this in perspective right now. We look like total idiots, straight tourists. We gotta go up, bro. I know we're gonna have to. Something. We're gonna have to go up. Literally overhead. <laughs> So basically what I do, so I did the camps for years, Yeah. and um, so I was like, how can I find a way to balance both because I, could, I couldn't choose from one another. Right, right. So what I started, I started to build my own clothing line. Nice. And part of the money that I make here fund my projects. Yeah, you know? that's fine. And now I do basketballs now. You see all those? Yeah, no, I was looking at those. 
So basically what we do is we run basketball camp for girls. Yeah. Yeah, we run basketball camp. So basically every morning is ball. Yeah. And every afternoon is lecture. Yes. And we got so basketball and life skills. And life skills, and yeah. Awesome. Private, like personal t tournaments for youth in Africa. Awesome. Yeah, it got me, for sure. But a little Uber sleep never hurts. Still got to make it to the airport, though, get some eats, and get out of there. Yeah, find like a blue, purple. Purple right there. It's like a... It's cold on just like that, we're on the Norway. Bro, you look brazy. Euros, now we have to come So pretty much everyone speaks English. So how many languages do you speak? I don't know, I suppose speak six. Wow, so you just, you can communicate anywhere. <laughs> yeah. that tough, but... That's exactly what we're doing. Is it a lockbox? Could be. <laughs> I'm scared, to be honest. I'm about to get the police call on it. Exactly. Pull up, not playing. I didn't pull up the picture that way. There's a picture here. I see it. I see see it. Over there. I would absolutely smash some pizza right now. Oh, absolutely. We gotta, we gotta carry these ones, don't we? <laughs> that boy was too hungry. So we're finally here in Oslo. It's about 3 a.m. right now. Um, crazy travel, but it's what you gotta expect when you're getting in and out of cities so quickly. So we're getting ready to do a two-day camp here. Um, this will be like a four-hour, four-hour Saturday, Sunday type of thing. It would be pretty small because COVID restrictions here were a little bit uh, heavier until recently. Now there's pretty much nothing, but it'll be like 20 to 25 athletes. Um, it'll be good because we'll have enough time to really dive into some of the details. I'm interested to see here in terms of the language barrier. Paris, obviously a lot of people do speak English, uh, but there are, there is a little bit more of a language barrier there, whereas we've heard from pretty much everyone that we've talked to here, everyone speaks English here, well, without overgeneralizing most people. Do. So I do find that when there isn't as much of a language barrier, we're able to really dive into details and be able to kind of coach them up more verbally. Um, so just from a coaching standpoint, that is interesting as well, but also just interested to see kind of what Norway is like. Paris is a very touristy spot. You kind of see everything that goes on in Paris from the sightseeing attractions to the trends, um, at least a little bit more than you would in a place like Norway, a city like Oslo. So we're excited to explore too. Um, we'll get up, get after it at the clinic, explore the city and kind of take in the culture so we're excited for that. Today I always say this before the clinics, we'll do some stuff that is a little bit out of the ordinary, all right? So you guys are gonna have to kind of embrace some weird stuff. It's not crazy weird, but it's, you know, stuff that you haven't done before probably, which is good. Um, so I want you guys to get outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Feel free to talk to us about anything basketball wise. We're here for you guys. So we wanna teach you as much as possible in these two days so you can leave with it even after we're gone and you guys can continue to apply that. Just find anywhere on the court without a ball with your partner, you're in charge. Wherever you hop, boom, you follow there. All right, let's see it. So go a little bit slow at first. All right, starting off simple. We got that? Let's go. I don't wanna see you here. You're straight up. All right, so whenever I say go, you have to roll over that front foot and sprint out to me at the red line.
You're skipping, skipping. Step in, one, two. Good, I love it. That's what we want, right? Embrace those mistakes, let's go. We'll stay stationary. You will be just handling the ball here. All right, whenever I reach in, you gotta smack my hand away. All right, so now you're having to control the ball while you're slapping that hand away, shielding it. The right decision, whatever. Keep it going because in a game, is anything gonna be perfect? No chance, all right, let's go. Give me some of your options for how you would turn, maybe what felt most comfortable for you to turn towards the basket. So it's kind of a pivot. There's like a here, into it. Yeah, so more of like a one, two type step. Anything else? Hop, right, so coming out here. I think this one's probably the quickest. Does that mean it's the best? No. I would suggest that the ones that you saw me do or saw them suggest and you haven't done yet, try those. Right, because those could be the best for you, you just haven't tried them. All two, it's the same exact thing, now the defender's next to you, so there's going to be a little bit more contact. I saw he was uh, coming to have a European tour, so we uh, packed up, uh, rented a car, got on a budget, and, and uh, just drove all night to come and spend two days with Coleman and, and the camp. Uh, seeing my kids having fun playing, like, this is a sport, you have to do drills, you have to do stuff that the coach said, but ba when basketball becomes fun, then kids get motivated themselves. That's, so that's what I wanted for my kids. Like me training right now. Yeah. So, uh, to be honest with you, I'm like training like uh, abs, like three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, um, three, like three days, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that does feel like uh, enough at all. So like, what do you like? I think, like, to be honest with you, we don't really target abs as much as like yeah. incorporates, it's incorporating in other stuff. So like, I think once you get to a certain point, it's like you don't really need to target it because it happens already in other movements. But do you have like any like, uh, like exercises. Yeah, something we'll maybe do tomorrow is like, if you reach out, so like reach out to the side, all right? And then push out this way, all right? Now hold, keep me from pushing your hands. Is that a core exercise? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you don't need to be doing all this yeah. when you can incorporate it into athletic movements. Like, all right, now take a reverse lunge here and reach up, all right? Don't let me push you. Is that a core exercise? Yeah, it is. Exactly. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So now you're getting, you're killing two birds with one stone and you're doing it in a way yeah. that is more realistic to how we actually move. Thank My you so man. Much, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. No, 100%, bro. It's, it's crazy that basketball can be a profession outside of playing basketball. Yeah, I you know, just thought that like people don't think of that way. Especially at RA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because what, what did you born? Uh, 1998. 1998, so yeah. you're way younger than me. I'm born 94. Yeah, hey, so, shit, you're still young as hell too, though. I, I, I am pretty young, especially for this game, but it's so much easier to stand out. Yeah. Especially in a small basketball community like Norway, where right. uh, people are really starting to get interest for basketball. It's not 2000 anymore where we struggle to find clips. Like these kids are seeing stuff. No, they're seeing they're everything, seeing exactly. Everything. So they have access to all the breakdowns. Like every time you do a clip, I get a notification every time you post it. Hell yeah. So which means that there's a bunch of kids that have that same notification. So they're right. absorbing the same information. Exactly. I no, and, and I mean, it's, it's crazy because it's becoming so much more global. Like it's not constrained to who you can work with in your area. It's like now it's whether it's social media, whether it's traveling for stuff, like you're able to impact so many people. And then, I mean, even in a small place or com basketball community like Norway, it's like you can impact so many people just because there aren't that many people doing it. So you can be the one to just take over and really leave your footprints. That's the thing. And, 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 and you do so much more than just do a job. You actually right. you, you, lay, you set a foundation. No, exactly. Let me tell you guys this. Oslo is fire. It's a stark contrast to Paris in that it's one of those places that we're never really seeing as Americans. And if we're being real, every time I told someone all the locations that we were going, it was always, yo, Paris, London, that's dope. But man, I enjoyed Oslo just as much for some reason. It's modern as hell. The people are chill. It was beautiful from an architecture standpoint. Way more diverse than you'd think. And this is one of those experiences that just opens up your eyes to how big the world is. There are so many places we don't even think or know about as Americans that we could fall in love with. 
and the only way to know is to get boots on the ground and see them. Thankfully, we're able to do that in a way that's integrated with basketball, so we not only get the tourist stuff, but a real feel of the people. Up! No! Up! No! Up! Hand I'm dribbling with here, I have to get downhill with this hand. So let's say I start dribbling in my right. In that case, I would have to dribble to my right. So he kind of knows where I'm going. Because of that, he's probably gonna cut me off a little bit. All right, so maybe I'm holding my right here. Now I have to get here. He's gonna get some contact, and then I'm gonna work on now taking that tight angle and getting to the rim. Bro. Yo, I'm a big fan of your other one. Appreciate that. Video for like six years or something. For real? When you were doing the attention to detail, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boys, nah, hell yeah, fans, bro. I've been doing your programs, your workouts. They've been helping a lot, man. Nah, man. So, yeah. That means a lot, bro. I like. I heard a little bit about what you're doing, so we'll talk more about it later. But that's big time. They need you. I'm a better captain or just leader in general on the court. I would say play into the type of leader that you are. Right. Some leaders are very vocal. Like they're always the ones who are on other people's asses, like making sure everyone's on their shit vocally. Whereas some are like very quiet, but they're leading by example. So like, you're not the most boisterous person on earth. I can tell. You're a little not that you don't not that you're not vocal, but you're you would probably be a little bit more of like a quiet leader. So that'd be like leading by example, doing things that are almost out of the ordinary to to make a point. If you're able to to play into that, where you don't have to be crazy vocal, but you're the one who's always on their shit you know, you're taking care of everything, all your boxes are checked, then I think that's probably even more powerful than just being the guy who's always yelling or, or um, being vocal with other people. So I would say find the type of leadership that works for you and then implement that as much as you can and make sure you never slip up on anything because that's when people start saying, oh, if the leader's slipping up, then either he's not a leader or we can slip up too. That's a really good question. I would say, if I had to point out a couple things, being able to use contact. So you, we did a lot of that today, right? Nobody in here is crazy tall. You have to find some way to create an advantage. So I think a lot of the best small guards are able to time that contact, use that contact. Number two, I mean, I think this is probably the most obvious one, but just having the balls to be the undersized guard who goes out and kills. And then I would say the last one is just being able to defend because the biggest thing that we see is like so, oh they're great on offense but what are they doing on defense when you got like a 6-4 guard on or when you have to defend a 6-4 guard I've had since you got bro this got mad sauce on it yeah mad sauce on it these for them our members it's the secret five yeah oh you made that man <laughs> stuff like that oh shit bro as long as they're they always break right, bro yeah. Nah, man, but y'all gotta go, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, right, right, I appreciate it. Right, 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 right. Yes, sir. Right. Right, 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 right. Y'all gotta appreciate it. Right. Right. Yes, sir. I'm the very good. Like, I appreciate everything. For real. Finally here. Finally here. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Right, let's head out. Let's head out. Yeah. 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 No problem. Yeah. 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 I was about to get in the... Yeah, that's wild. That's, <laughs> that's how we feel when we're in the Yeah, oh my god, I can imagine. Yeah. Were you driving like over there? One million pound I was driving over there, okay, yeah. so it was a bit weird. Yeah. I mean, usually, outside of London, the people are nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like New York. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, true. What's the, the hoop culture been yeah, around here UK, recently? I mean, it's, it's, in terms of the youth level, it's one of the biggest sort of participation yeah. sports. It's a different question. Yeah. But, yeah, but, um, I mean, obviously, it's all urban areas yeah. that 
Kind of, uh, it's just hard to compete with like some soccer of their best football. players. Are on the yeah, no, exactly. Um, um, exactly. And they've got rugby. I think that the amount they've spent on the squad. But, uh, they've right to yeah, I mean, it's changing the culture. I mean, what's helped is got, Instagram's I changed a lot of it. Obviously, yeah, it's ten years. Plans. True. It's transformed and like. Before, if you told them ten title years ago, I mean, do you know who Michael? Well, maybe Michael Jordan. Yeah. Even Kobe Bryant, it wouldn't be not as. Yeah. But now people know. I know John Moran. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's no, it's crazy. No, I think one of the biggest barriers I've been noticing with the time difference is like, you just can't watch yeah. the NBA games. It's so I'm like, do you guys watch all of EuroLeague or like, uh, you stay I mean, up? EuroLeague is quite hard to watch as yeah, well. Exa yeah, exactly. So, so this, like, even in Paris, I was like, you guys watch Euro or in Norway too? And they're like, not really. I mean, mo most people would watch stream it NBA. Yeah. Yeah, I just stay up to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We got the massage, we got the nanos, we got the. Five hey, guys. You, you picked a good spot. Oh, I'm yeah. This is completely by chance. Hey, you gotta give it to you, you Hey, give it to you. hey we could walk in and it could be a, a complete shit show. Hey, but no, but like, go, location? Go Liverpool Street, you can go anywhere. Really? Yeah, like, the station is just there. Really? So if you want to do something, yeah, you can go anywhere. Oh, that's perfect. This is a complete guess, so. You, you did well, looks man. like it turned out well. Oh, when I checked it, I was like, damn, they're right. I'm popping the seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So one crazy thing about England is that the power outlets there are different from the rest of Europe. Most of you guys probably know this, but us being the stupid Americans had zero idea. And because of this, the next day was a little bit rough. Camera wasn't alive to document anything. Phones were dying all over the place. And then that combined with being on the public transportation system in London for the first time made getting to that clinic a little bit of a struggle. But hey, eventually we made it. The way I think about it is there are two different types of finishing with contact. When you're on the ground and when you're in the air. All right, so we'll attack both of those starting with when you're on the ground. Not bad. Ten. So I'm taking one bound into it here. All right, since I don't have to worry about the dribble, I can focus more on just getting up with that, almost like a vertical jump. All right, from there, I'm just meeting him in the air. He's trying to block it, but more so just kind of create that contact and mimic what we would see in a game. I'm bounding into it, and then we're kind of meeting in the air, and I'm finishing however. All right, I was gonna try to lay that, but I don't want to tear my ACL right now. 10. Especially when there's clinics like this, and I want to expose them to new things. It's more so to me about giving them the stuff that they don't usually get. What inspired you to think that way? Kind of I think it was no, number one, kind of reading like, yeah, I'm sure we but number one was like reading some of the research that goes into like actually how humans learn skills. Um, so I was like on some nerdy shit, number one, like just kind of reading like the, uh, like the research behind it, the science behind it, but more so just kind of shifting how I thought about it in terms of like, Everything we do in a game is literally in some way reactive to what's going on around us. It's one thing you've done that I definitely want to do in the future is kind of have my own gym. Yeah. What's some of the stuff that you kind of knew beforehand going into it? And I knew that I was gonna fig I was willing to figure it out along the way and make mistakes. Because otherwise I was gonna go in there and be like, yo, it's just gonna be perfect. And the next thing you know, you are making mistakes and it's like that's when you start to get thrown off psychologically. I wish I had talked to a little bit more people before opening the gym who've done it successfully right. and just kind of picking their brain. I did that a little bit beforehand, but I was so eager to get into it right. that I probably could have done a little bit more of that. Yeah, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Let me keep you too much for you. You're nah, bro, you're start, good. Man. Nah, I'm good, bro. I'm always down to chop it up. Is this your first time in London? It is, bro. Okay. It, yeah, it's my first time in Europe, so I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm still getting the feel for everything. Yeah, but. yeah. It. So now I'm side to side as I'm going forward. Again, quick pops off the ground. Ready, go. You guys are gonna be racing. So everyone on this baseline racing each other, everyone on this baseline racing each other to the red line. All right, so it's a shorter sprint, but most times in basketball, we're only accelerating a certain amount of space anyways, right? We can't really get into a full speed sprint. So we'll do it a few different ways. For the first type here, we're going in a no. push-up position. Go! Get there, get there, go! American accents. 
talking about, man? That's, see, that's your guy. That's your guy. That's your guy. Nah, 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 you see? Y'all got all the burgers. Like, y'all got y'all got all the y'all got all the burgers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What are they saying? I mean, we getting in that bag, man. We getting in that bag by any means. By any means. Give it a shot. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> That is the toughest question. I would say that's something that I need to work on the most is like communicating to athletes how to do that. I think the biggest thing for me is like, we attach ourselves when we're basketball players. Like everything we do as a human is attached to us as a basketball player. I think that's where I see a lot of players who get really good improvement from the mental side of things because they're able to just stay more steady rather than missing a shot and being all mad. And I was that guy who would like literally miss one shot and punt the ball to the other side of the room and stuff. And once I realized like, really doesn't matter that much and you kind of detach yourself from that, that's where myself and others have made a lot of strides. Uh, how did you build your reputation as a trainer? Consistently getting players better, um, showing love to players and making sure it's not just on the basketball side of things. So like, when I come in here, it's not just like, oh, you're a good player or oh, oh, you're a basketball player. It's like, I'm trying to make a genuine connection with everyone in here and every player I've ever worked with. Thankfully, after two hectic days of losing phones, cameras dying, transportation delays, all that, we got to see London a bit, which was needed because it's always been a big dream of mine. It's definitely one of those situations where you're looking at stuff that you've only seen in movies and TV shows and all over social media, and it just becomes surreal. And then the fact that you're there because of basketball, because of your passion, that makes it even crazier. But what's not ideal about the grind of this trip is that it's such short stops in each place that we never really got the full experience anyway. But I think we'd all agree that if we could stay a week or two weeks or a month in any of these places, it would be a dope ass experience. Instead, we would kind of get used to a place, we'd start to get the feel for it, then we're out of there. But no complaints at all. We're on to the next one and we're all ready to make sure that that one's the best one yet. But before we get going, the content has to stay rolling, even if that means narrating a video in the airport. Yeah, that would've been bad. But these, bro, these, bo these boarding speakers are... I'll just say a couple words and then hope that nothing gets said. Say a couple words. Where, what even goes up here? It's a lounge like that. To me, this is big time athleticism. To me, this is big time athleticism. Sounds crazy, and of course, we all want to get bouncy and dunk on people. But being able to coordinate our limbs in midair, find the rim, adjust, and overall be fluid with how we move in midair is a skill. To me, this is big time athleticism. Sounds crazy, and of course, we all want to get bouncy and dunk on people. Being able to coordinate our limbs in midair. Good enough, let's get it. <laughs> so that was a wrap for the first leg of our trip. Make sure to stay tuned for part two, where we're in Milan, Vienna, and Munich. Thanks for tuning in.